Thank you, Dan. If you've ever wanted to foster a pet, there are a lot of great opportunities out there right now for you to do just that. Yep, and to learn more about that, we're joined by Laura Madsen, volunteer and pet foster parent, and Amy Francis, Paws for Life Utah dog trainer and owner of Paws Forward Dog Training. Ladies, great to have you with us. And we also have Jack with us here Jack. as well. Yes. Why don't we start off with him? Tell us a little bit about Jack. Yes, so Jack is our three-year-old poodle mix. Um, he was current. He was recently in a foster situation, but we are lovingly calling it a foster failure because he was adopted. So that's kind of an example of what can occur with foster situations. So failure is good in this it's, situation. Yeah, it in is. this situation, <laughs> it's a very good thing. That's pretty amazing. So, what does it take to be a good foster parent for a four-legged friend? Yes, um, the great thing is the rescue provides most of the necessities. Obviously, the food, the supplies, the vet care. What the foster home really brings is the environment and the love and patience for the animal. So if this is something you might be interested in, what steps do you need to take? What do you need to know about fostering a pet? Well, I mean, the goal is to move these animals as quickly as possible. So when they come into your home, um, and a lot of times I get to work with as the trainer, the uh, foster parents and ask them what are the behavioral issues, what are their motivations, what are the little quirks that we can work through and work with to be able to find them a home as soon as possible. So it is a commitment to bettering these animals' lives and moving them forward as soon as possible. So does a family get to pick and choose which animal they get, how long they can have them, what what goes into this commitment? You can. There actually are a variety of ways to get involved with fostering. We do have some more open-ended cases uh, where the animal comes in, who is adoptable, who you hold in keep until they are adopted. We have ones who need a home just for a week or two as they recover from surgery, um, need a home as their foster family is actually out of town, so you are a temporary foster home. So there's so lots of ways of to get involved. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have to prepare yourself mentally because I would imagine you can get attached to these animals and maybe when it's time to let it go off and spread its wings, you're thinking, well, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That does happen um, and, and that's why we Again, we call them foster failures in the best <laughs> way, and it does happen, but that's why we have such amazing foster parents is because that's what occurs. You, you fall in love with these animals, and you treat them like your own, and you, they, you want them to feel welcome. So it is part of the job, um, and it is a sacrifice that you have to make, but it's definitely worth it. Laura, you even told about your experience about yes. you fostered some 200 animals. Yes, next month will be 10 years. We have been a foster home. Uh, we've had 200 animals during that time. Luckily, we've only kept three in the past <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> so we're doing pretty good for the failure side of things. Um, but you do, you absolutely get attached. If I tell myself, as hard as it is to let them go, there is someone else who still needs help. Yeah. So that in fact, you going. fostered Jack. Yes, I did temporarily before he found his home. So how hard, like, it must be bittersweet, right? It is. He's a great boy, but obviously I get to still see him, so mm -hmm. it's a good thing. <laughs> All right, real quick, talk about the need uh, that you have locally and how mm -hmm. people can get, get involved and help out. Yeah, so reaching out to us directly is, is the best um, way to start and letting us know what you kind of can help out with and what you can offer. Uh, and then we will let you know what we have. So we have a lot of animals that just come through daily, different mm -hmm. breeds ages, sizes. Um, he's hypoallergenic, so a lot of people can really only bring that into their home. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you need, we can help provide, like, uh, like Laura was saying, you can, we can help provide all the medical necessities and food and things like that, but some people do donate that. They actually take care of it. Um, and then uh, obviously offering your time and commitment to helping better this dog and speaking with us about the, a new training program to put them through and things like that. Terrific. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura and Amy with Paws for Life. If you want to open your hearts and your home to fostering a four-legged best friend, you can just contact pflu.org. We'll have a link on abc4.com.